Now we'll take a look at this question. Is light a particle or a wave? This question has been under discussion for a long time, hundreds and hundreds of years. And we'll go back to Isaac Newton. Newton had something to say about just about every topic in physics. And, and he was an authority on physics in general and on light in particular. And he was considered an authority for good reason. He had written the Principia, which was just a phenomenal work of both physics and math. Um, basically rewrote physics. What used to be Aristotelian physics became uh, was discarded and physics became what Isaac Newton said it was. He also wrote a book entirely on optics and he came up with um, new ideas on optics and new experimental means of testing and verifying them and had a better explanation of light than anyone else at the time and a better expl explanation for just about everything in physics than anyone else at the time. And because of Newton's authority, because he had been so successful and so um, his, his theories had been proven so accurate and he had been so successful at explaining the natural world, the scientific community largely accepted his ideas. And Newton, it turns out, Newton believed that light is a particle. So this was his view. Light is a particle. So Newton believed that when light is shining, say light coming from a candle, or light coming from the sun, or light from a fire, that light is little particles traveling along through space or through the air. And he called these, car these particles corpuscles. And his theory is sometimes called the corpuscular theory of light, because that's what he called them. And because Newton was known as the most brilliant physicist around, everybody believed this. Nobody wanted to debate Newton. People who did usually lost uh, because he was so brilliant. And his ideas were, for the most part, correct. So scientists believed that light was a particle based on the authority of Isaac Newton. Now, Newton lived in the uh, late 1600s and early 1700s. And about a century after Newton, a physicist named Thomas Young came along. He was also from Britain. Thomas Young. Here's a picture of him, Thomas Young. And Thomas Young began to put forth the theory that light is a wave. Now, not only is, is it a big deal to overcome a theory that has been pretty well entrenched in the scientific community for about a century, but this theory was Newton's theory and, and came with all of the authority and, and prestige of Isaac Newton himself. And so Thomas Young was um, uh, fighting the, the trend here. He, he put forth the idea that light is a wave, but he did it very effectively. He demonstrated that light would do certain things that only waves can do. Waves can do things that particles can't. For example, waves can interfere. If you have some waves on the water, for example, say, say here's, um, here's the water, and say you have some waves traveling this way, and on the surface of the water you have some other waves traveling this way. When they get, when they get together in the middle, they can add up to a larger wave. And this is called constructive interference. two waves can add up to a larger wave. You can see the same thing happen with, with waves on a rope. If you take one end of a rope and, and shake it such that a wave pulse travels down the rope and at the same time someone down at the other end shakes this end up and down such that a wave pulse is traveling along. When these waves get together they don't hit each other and stop. They actually merge into a larger wave and they add up mathematically. If this wave is one foot tall and this wave over here is one foot tall, then they will add up to a wave that's two feet tall. And waves can, can add up like that. They can occupy the same place at the same time, and they will mathematically add up. Sound waves do the same thing. If you're uh, outside, say for example, and someone cranks up a lawnmower, well this lawnmower is making a lot of noise, and say you're standing here listening, and you hear all this noise, and then somebody else over here starts up another lawnmower, 
well then there's a lot of more noise coming here those sound waves both hit you at the same time and and you notice that it's louder with two lawnmowers running there's more noise than with one and sound waves can add up as well particles don't interfere in this way particles don't collide and merge into a bigger particle think about two baseballs hitting each other one baseball coming from the left and one coming from the right. They don't hit each other and all of a sudden just go and merge into a bigger baseball and then continue on through each other like waves will do. Particles don't interfere in this way. Particles would collide. They would deflect or collide or bounce off each other, but they won't interfere. They won't merge and temporarily add up to a larger particle.